Thank you for joining us today. It's, it's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, William H. Rushton, Process Chromatography Scientist from BioRad Laboratories. Thank you for that introduction. Today I'm going to be speaking about purification of adeno-associated virus purification based on ion exchange and mixed motor resins. This was done with our collaborator, IBET, in Portugal, and I'm going to be presenting the results of these experiments. I'm going to start out here showing a uh, bar graph showing the market for AEV products in the market. So here you see the gene therapy vector space and 46% of current trials are using AAV8. Uh, there are two approved marketed products using AAV. However, there still is a need for efficient manufacturing capabilities to meet the growing market need for these therapies. Here's a standard workflow for AAV products. You have your cell culture, harvest, lysis, depth filtration, and the nuclease treatment. Once that happens, you then will capture. Typically, it is an affinity right now followed by an intermediate polish step, and then the final UFDF. The affinity resin is most commonly used. Um, it offers high selectivity, resolution, and capacity. However, it is expensive due to its manufacturing costs, and the final product often requires testing of the lead to ligand to show that it is removed. For the rest of the talk, I'm going to be using this uh, method here shown as an alternative to affinity for adeno-associated virus products. So you have the same initial steps. Uh, we are proposing using as a capture either an ion exchange or a mixed mode followed by an ion exchange mixed mode as the polish. We feel that an anion exchange and multimodal chromatography are going to show a promising alternative to purification for AAVs. Next, I'm going to speak about the resins that were chosen for this AEV-8 purification. Before I begin with the specific resins, I just wanted to show BioRad's portfolio. As you can see, we cover the entire space of resins that could be out there. Um, I would also like to point out that with Nuvia A-Prime4A being an anion exchange hydrophobic interaction mix mode, we are the only company that covers all of the mixed mode selectivities used in the biopharma space. I'm going to start talking about some of the features of the Nuvi HPQ resin, which was used in this study. Below on this table, you see some of the features of the Nuvi HPQ. It is a 50 micron particle, strong anion exchanger. It has good fast mass transfer and the ability to flow at up to 300 centimeters an hour and it is ideal for purification of large biomolecules. Taking a deeper dive as to why Nuvi HPQ works for larger uh, molecules, HPQ was designed with a large pore dimension, so it's got a 0.5 micron pore size, much larger than most of the resins out there. It also has an optimized surface area for easy accessibility, absorption, and binding and the surface extender density and length were optimized to allow for these large biomolecules to enter into the particles versus surface binding that happens with most other resins. Uh, it is also a rugged and mechanically stable base bead, so as you get into higher flow rate, you will not see that kind of uh, compression of the particle that you might see with the softer resins like an agarose. Now I'm going to transition over to the Nuvia A prime 4A, which is the other resin that was evaluated for this study. It is also a 50 micron particle like the Nuvia HPQ. It is a mixed mode with an aromatic hydrophobic anion exchange uh, ligand. As with the HPQ, it can handle uh, higher flow rates up to 300 centimeters an hour and has uh, very good selectivity. Now a little more detail into the Nuvia A-Pri4A resin. Uh, as I previously mentioned, it's a 50 micron pore particle. It is a hydrophilic polymer, so you won't see some non-specific hydrophobic interactions that you might see from, you know, say an agarose-based uh, resin. It has strong anion exchange and hydrophobic interactions as its main modes, some hydrogen bonding. Some of the good characteristics, it's salt tolerant, offering new and unique selectivities. It can have a straightforward method development, offering a wide design space, and as I mentioned previously, good mechanical and chemical stability. 
Moving on, I will now begin to speak about the method development using the Nuvia HPQ and Nuvia A Prime 4A. Now on to the initial screening results of Nuvia HPQ for the capture. On the right, you see a representative chromatogram. A one mil column was used for initial screening and then scaled up to five mil columns. 10 millimolar tris pH 8.8 with varying salt elution steps were used. The NACL gradient indicated that the steps of 200 millimolar and 500 millimolar led to the high AAV8 recoveries, and then stripping of the column in two molar salt. Several additives were evaluated, 10 millimolar magnesium chloride and 0.1% tween 20, but they were found to provide no significant impact on AAV8 recovery or a purity clearance. They were, however, found to promote AAV8 stability. Total particle recovery was found to be 90% in the 200 millimolar elution step. There was no empty or full particle separation, but that was not the focus of this capture step. And after this run, approximately 65% of the HCP and 40% of the DNA were removed uh, at the 200 millimolar step. Here is the data evaluating Nuvi A Prime 4A as a capture step. On the right is a representative chromatogram. As with the HPQ, Tris at pH 8.8 and salt were used as the uh, conditions. The gradient steps were 100, 200, 500 millimolar to see where suitable separation between the empty and full capsids might occur. Stripping was again performed two molar salt. The same additives were evaluated, and as with the HPQ, no major impact was observed on the AEV8 recovery or a purity clearance. The virus did elute in three different areas, the 100, 200, and 500, and gave recoveries of 3, 30, 40, and 25% respectively. 60% uh, of the genome-containing particles were eluted in the 200 millimolar step, leading to a full particle enrichment in this fraction. Uh, of the DNA that was loaded, approximately 60% of that was eluted in the 500 millimolar fraction, and then the remaining was in the strip. Based on the results of those initial screening runs, here is our proposed workflow using Nuvia HPQ as our capture and Nuvia A Prime 4A as our polish resin. Moving on, I'm now going to discuss the optimized workflow, as I mentioned in the previous slide, using Nuvia HPQ as the capture and Nuvia A Prime 4A as the polish resin. This is showing the AAV8 optimized chromatography workflow. Uh, so you'll have your digestion, concentration dye filtration, and load onto the Nuvia HPQ column. Uh, again, the buffers, 10 millimolar tris with the magnesium chloride and tween in there at pH 8.8. Those were added to prevent binding to the tubing containers, uh, and the results were similar uh, to the initial screening. The elution buffer has the two molar salt with those gradients. The flow rate is one mil per minute for a residence time of one minute. The HPQ elution steps were as with the screening at 200, 500, and then the two molar steps. The 200 millimolar elution peak was then diluted one to five with the equilibration buffer and loaded onto the new A prime 4A column. The A prime elution steps were the same as the initial screening of 100, 200, 500 millimolar, and then the two molar salt strip. Now I'm showing the results of the scale up. So in these situations, the columns are now five mil columns. Uh, the residence time was increased from one to three minutes. This showed no relevant impact on AEV8 recovery or impurity clearance, and the DVC was determined to be 3, 10 to the 13th total particles per mil for the HBQ. For the A prime, also the residence time was increased from 1 to 3 minutes. Again, this did not have an impact to the purification yields. The DVC was determined to be 2.4 times 10 to the 13th total particles per mil, and higher protein DNA removal in the two step purification the Nuvia HPQ, Nuvia A prime was shown compared to the single step purification with Nuvia A prime 4A. On this slide, we're showing the final AAV8 chromatography workflow. On the left is a chromatogram showing the capture using the Nuvia HPQ. 
you see peak one is the 200 millimolar salt, which had the 90 per, greater than 90% of uh, particles. That was then diluted one to five and loaded onto the Nubia A-Prime 4A, which is shown on the right. And the 200 millimolar salt showed enrichment for the full capsids compared to the other uh, elution steps. In order to uh, show this as a proper workflow, there was a lot of analytics involved. So this is the workflow that was done. The full capsids are identified by quantifying the content by qPCR. In order to assure that only we're quantifying the DNA inside the AAV, a nuclease digestion step was performed. Following that inactivation, the viruses are disrupted and the DNA is purified. The qPCR is a standard protocol and the primers target a sequence within the transgene. Total AAV quantification was done by ELISA. The total protein to viral genome ratio was a complementary technique used to validate the quantification. Total DNA was done using a Pico Green assay kit, and total protein was with a Pierce BCA assay. Here is a table of the results of all the analytical work that was performed. On the top, you have the Nubia HPQ. As you can see in the 200 millimolar salt fraction, you have a total particle yield of 100% um, with some residual DNA and residual protein removal. That is then run over the Nuvia A prime after a one to five dilution in the equilibration buffer. If you focus on the 200 millimolar fraction for the A prime, you can see the viral genome enrichment as well as complete removal of the residual DNA and protein. On this page, we're showing the results in a bar graph form showing the quantification of the full AEV8 particle content, which is in the blue bars, and the enrichment orange of the different AEV8 samples from the purification steps. You can see in the HPQ, there is no enrichment of the empty versus full capsids. However, both the A prime as polishing as well as the A prime as a capture alone shows full particle enrichment in the 200 millimolar fraction. Moving on to the uh, final summary. So the Nuvi HBQ as a capture, the elution was in a 200 millimolar step that led to a high recovery of the total proteins. While there was no apparent separation between empty and full, that wasn't the purpose of this actual step at the time. Uh, there was DNA that was co-eluted with the viruses in the 200 millimolar, and there were also some proteins. Moving on to the Nuvia A-prime-4A, you're able to see enrichment of the full particles in the 200 millimolar elution peak, giving good recovery and also removal of impurities and DNA. Uh, the DBC is higher than 3 times 10 to the 13th particles per mil for the Nuvia HBQ, and for the Nuvia A-prime-4A, has a DBC of approximately 2.4 times 10 to the 13th total particles per mil. We feel that this process workflow could be a more flexible economical alternative to traditional affinity and ultra centrifugation gradient purification processes. I'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation and to highlight some of uh, BioRad's additional offerings. We can support your methods development with a worldwide on-site support from our network of experts. Uh, I'm based outside of Philadelphia. However, they have colleagues throughout the world that can come and help work with your purification challenges. Uh, we will give you dedicated technical support as needed. We will continue that support through process transfer and regulatory procedures. Uh, you can also evaluate our online resources at bio-rad.com slash library, where you can request resin samples. You can speak to our scientists view packing tutorials, and request a customized seminar. Feel free to email us at process at bio-rad.com. One last note, in addition to all those online and on-site resources, we do have two process chromatography applications lab, one in the United States and one in Europe. We are able to help accelerate your downstream process development and analytics. Our teams can help you with resin screening, process analytical method development, scale-up studies or process scale-up, process optimization, as well as column packing and performance studies. I'd like to thank you for your time. And with that, I'd be happy to accept any questions you might have. Okay, great. 
And as a reminder to our audience, you can go ahead and type in your questions for our speaker now. So our first question is, how does a mixed mode scale up for this workflow compared to a monolith column? Oh, that's a great question, Alex. Uh, yes, um, you know, these resins are better than monoliths because monoliths uh, by design are not scalable. So as you might be able to develop process at small scale, as you try to get larger columns, the monoliths just aren't going to translate. Whereas the uh, HPQ and the A-prime are both designed to be fully scalable and have been packed in large columns uh, with no issues. Additionally, A-prime with its salt tolerance uh, that I mentioned, as well as its mixed mode abilities, gives you a much wider design space to be able to actually perform your purifications. All right, well, it looks like we just have time for one more question today. So if we don't get to any of your questions, we'll be passing them along to William, who can follow up with you directly. Please go ahead and continue to type in any questions you have, and we'll get those passed along. The last question for the webcast is, it looks like you get good separation of empty full capsids in a single step with Nuvia A-prime. Do you need two steps? Uh, okay, that's another good question, Alex. Um, I would, would have to say yes. The reason is... While you're getting those empty versus full separations with the new VA prime as a capture step, the new VA HBQ showed a higher binding capacity as well as the ability to retain 100% of the total particles and removal of DNA and protein. This then makes the second step with the A prime that much better because it doesn't have as much of the impurities uh, as a challenge uh, to allow the enhancement of the empty versus full separation. Okay, great. Well, thank you, William. Thank you, Alex, and uh, thank you to everybody uh, for joining in on this webinar today.